Hello everyone. Recently I participated in a physiology and biometric study at UNLV which involved a lot of swimming in different scenarios. The purpose of the study was to see how core temperature and muscle activity are influenced by wearing different wetsuits during triathlons. The four different scenarios for the first part of the study had me swimming in my bathing suit, in buoyancy shorts, in a sleeveless wetsuit, and full sleeve wetsuit in a pool. Okay, I just did the third scenario and a sleeveless sleeveless wetsuit. Holy smokes. <laughs> I never swam in a wetsuit in a pool before, but it seriously cuts off a lot of time. For each scenario, I had to swim 75 yards easy, 75 yards at medium pace, and 75 yards fast. I stopped every 25 yards so they could get the readings off the gadgets they had taped all over my shoulder. I can basically tell you what we all probably know without needing a study to tell us. But guess what? Swimming with a wetsuit is actually the fastest. <laughs> At least the full sleeve wetsuit was for me, by a lot. It's hard to tell with a sleeveless because I used theirs and it wasn't very comfortable, so that may have hindered my performance a bit. However, a sleeveless wetsuit, uncomfortable or not, was still much faster than without a wetsuit. The full sleeve wetsuit was the last that I had to do out of the four, so by then I should have been the most tired from the study, but I cut a significant amount of time off of my pace and I wasn't flip turning like I did when I was just swimming in my bathing suit and buoyancy shorts. To give you an idea, I will just give you my time from the last set, just my bathing suit and with my wetsuit. And those were the fastest sets for each scenario. I increased my speed a bit with each different variable, but considering I was swimming 25 yards between 21 to 22 seconds in my bathing suit, and with a full sleeve wetsuit, I was swimming between 16 to 17 seconds, I would have to say it was a significant enough difference that I really can't deny the benefits of swimming in a wetsuit. Plus, I feel like Catwoman when I wear that thing, so that's pretty cool, to me at least. They are still looking for more participants for this study so if you're in the Las Vegas area or coming to for a visit and would like to participate let me know in the comments and I will put you in touch with the right people okay day one of the research study is done it was fun I only had to swim about 1200 meters and since I had so much fun that day, I decided to go back <laughs> for another round. <laughs> this part of the study was a lot of fun. It's like all of a sudden I really love swimming, so I jumped at the opportunity to participate in a study that had me swimming a lot. I even got to practice my flip turns some more. And just in case you want to see how recently I was just absolutely awful at flip turning, you can check out my video here in which I taught myself how to flip turn and gave some tips about how I learned. Before I was able to participate in this part of the study, I actually had to swallow a pill the evening before. This little red and white pill had a sensor in it that was able to measure my core temperature. It might even still be floating around inside me at this very moment. I was told it will take four to seven days to leave my body and I was advised not to collect the sensor when it does make its appearance into the open air again. The purpose for this part of the study was to see the effects on your core to body temperature while wearing a wetsuit during swimming exercises. It's not often, but there has been occurrences when people have died during the swim portion of the triathlon. The cause could be because of various reasons, but this study wants to determine if the body's core temperature may play a result in these occurrences. For this study, I swam a thousand meters at race pace in just my bathing suit. Then I got out and after I dried off and recovered for a couple minutes, I put my full sleeve wetsuit on and swam another thousand meters at race pace. For me personally, my core temperature remained pretty much the same. Strangely enough, it even went down a bit when I began swimming at one point, which seems odd, but it was a difference of less than a degree. So for me specifically, we found out that my body is actually really good at regulating its core temperature, even under stress. There could be many factors to this. It could be due to my fitness levels and even my nutrition habits. The core temperature study wasn't focused on how fast I could swim like the first study, but I think it's worth mentioning that my comfortable race pace and just a bathing suit resulted in me swimming a thousand meters in 18 minutes and seven seconds. And with a full sleeve wetsuit, despite a bit of fatigue from the first effort, I was able to swim another thousand meters in just under 17 minutes. I cut seven seconds off of my average pace per hundred meters. And as I said, they are in still in need of more participants for this study, so there are no results to be shared, but I will definitely share them as soon as I know. I really just wanted to show what it's like to participate in this university study. Oftentimes we find ourselves quoting studies that we have read about, but how often do you actually imagine how the researchers were able to come to their conclusions? So hopefully you enjoyed this video and it was able to offer you some insight and maybe encourage you to seek the opportunity to participate in one of these future studies. If anything, it may give you the opportunity to run on an Alter-G 
like I got to for another study. If you would like me to share similar future experiences I have, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And until next time, goodbye. <laughs>